All right, everybody. Welcome to Justin Mind's Getting Started webinar. My name is Danielle Schneider. If you have ever sent in a question to our community portal or our customer support portal, you may have heard from me before. So today we're going to learn how to get started in Just in Mind. We're going to learn how to explore the Just in Mind user interface, including our wide array of, of panels, including widgets, the properties panel, the outline panel, the events panel, and of course the screens in your prototype. After that, we'll learn how to design a basic prototype using some of our pre-made iOS widgets, which simplifies process. We'll learn how to start building your basic prototype in two ways. First, with Sketch, a Mac OS design application. We'll also learn how to start within Just in Mind itself. After that, we'll learn how to add some basic interactions to your prototype, including some link to events, set active panel events, and on change events. We'll even create some basic conditions in your prototype to make it a little more complex. After that, we'll learn how to share your prototype to your online account, add reviewers to that account, and add comments to that shared prototype. We'll also learn how to view your prototype on your own mobile device. And if at any point you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the questions panel below. We'll have a Q&A at the end and I'll may be sure to clear up any confusion. All right, so let's get started. So here is the prototype we're gonna be building today. It is a music rating prototype. It has four different screens, a login screen, a player screen, a rating screen, and a share screen. Okay, so let's start building this. So there are two ways to get started. The first way is with Sketch, which is a design application. So you can start by building your own design in Sketch and importing that into Just in Mind, or you can download one of Sketch's many pre-made designs, which you can find here on sketchappresources.com. I've already gone ahead and downloaded one. And here it is. As you can see that there are many different pages and elements into this prototype, or rather this design, it's quite complex. So in order to make sure you can import this into Just in Mind, you'll need to download the Sketch Just in Mind plugin. Once you've done that, you go up here to Plugins. You'll see Just in Mind. Then you click Export Artboards Layers. Click on that and you'll see you can choose a device to export the prototype. We would choose iPhone. I've already done this, so we're not going to export that again. And it will generate a VP file of that sketch design. Here it is. You can see that it looks exactly the same as it did in Sketch. All the screens are here, and they're all... And if you'll, you'll look here, you can see that each of them are individual elements, meaning that you can select them and change their attributes or add events to them. But say you don't want to use Sketch or you can't, you're using Windows, that's no problem. You can go up here to File, New, Prototype, and start with Ingest in Mind itself. Right away here, you'll see a few templates to begin with, like Web, iPhone, iPhone Plus, iPad, Android, and so on. We're just going to use an iPhone. Now you'll see another few ways to start your prototype. You can start it from an empty, empty canvas. You can start it from an image on your computer. Note that there are two ways of including the image. You can include the image in your prototype, meaning that it is embedded in your prototype, or you can use link to image files, which means that the image will be updated as you're working on it. Say you're using a Photoshop image and you're constantly making updates to that image, but don't want to have to keep updating it within just in mind, use link to image files and it will be updated automatically as you make changes to that image. Next, you'll see a few examples that we've already created that you can start from. And lastly, you can start from another VP file you've already created. But today, we're just going to start from an empty prototype. And we're loading a blank workspace here.
All right, here is the just-in-mind canvas. Here you'll see the empty prototype shell. Over here you'll see the screens of your prototype. Here is the properties panel, which allows you to change the style and position of elements on the canvas. Down here you'll see the outline panel, which allows you to change the position of elements on the canvas relative to one another. Down here you can see the events panel, through which you can add interactions to your prototype. And over here, and lastly, we will be, where we will begin today are widgets. Widgets are the elements that you place onto the canvas. And if at any point you want to change which panels you can see, you can go up here to view, and you can check or uncheck as many as you would like. You can see that I have unchecked a few that we are not going to be using today. All right, so let's get started building this prototype. So you can see that there are many different types of widgets here, from, widget, from basic widgets like rectangles all the way down here to more advanced widgets like dynamic panels, and also some conditional widgets that are based on the, the prototype template that you chose in the beginning. So since we chose an iPhone, we can see iPhone iOS. And if we scroll down here, we can see iOS icons. So we're going to start building today under iPhone iOS screen examples. We're going to look to the splash screen. Drag that onto the canvas. Okay. All right. So since we're not building a mail prototype here, we can go ahead and delete this icon just by selecting it on the canvas, then pressing delete. All right. And also since we're building a, a music rating prototype, maybe a music related icon might work here. So let's go ahead to the widgets panel again and search. Let's search headphone. You can see a little headphone icon here, drag it onto the canvas. And that's pretty small, right? We don't want it to look that small. So we can go over here to the properties panel once we have it selected, scroll down to position and size, and you can change the width and height to anything you would like. I'm going to change mine to 150 by 150. All right. So this icon here is an SVG image, which means that it can be scaled as large or small as you would like, but it won't lose any clarity or become pixelated. You can also change the color of this image. I'm going to change it to a light blue. All right. Now we'll add some text here to indicate that this is loading. So go over here to basic widgets, drag the text here, and just write loading rate my music. And let's make that a little bigger. To the properties panel, let's change it to size 16. Drag it into the middle, all right. So the next thing we're gonna do is group these items we put on the canvas so far into dynamic panels. So dynamic panels offer a unique ability to simplify your screens by allowing you to switch back and forth between content easily without having to create a bunch of different screens. Since we want to have this screen be both a splash screen and a loading screen, as well as a login screen, dynamic panels are especially useful here. Okay. So to group these in dynamic panels, you can either select these items on the canvas or you can look to the outline panel. I prefer the outline panel. So to select these elements, click on one here, and then shift click on another. And lastly on splash screen, you can see that they're all selected here by multiple selection. Then control click on this selection. Then group in dynamic panels. Now you can see that each of these elements have been placed into panel one. They're still selectable, but they're under this panel. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add another panel. You can look here and you'll see the option to add another panel. Click that plus, and now you'll see that a blank canvas has been put on the screen. Okay, the next thing to do is to drag a rectangle here into the dynamic panel. You'll see that it's being dragged into the panel if it shades blue. It can be easy to accidentally place something outside of the dynamic panel, but you can always 
drag it back in through the outline panel and it will be placed inside. Okay, so let's move this here a little bit. Actually, let's zoom out a little bit to give us a little better view of the canvas. Let's go to 70%. That's better. Okay, let's resize this. All right, and we'll go up here and get rid of the border. All right, let's add some text to indicate that we're gonna be signing into our account. There we go. Let's have it be a little bigger. Let's go with size 12. All right, now we're going to add some text to represent the username and password. Like this here, username down here, password. And we'll make these a little bigger text as well. Okay, so now look here again to basic widgets and to input text field. Drag that onto the canvas and we'll change the border here so that you'll be able to see it against the white background. Okay. So you want, when during simulation, you want to be able to type in here and see what you're typing into your username, but you don't want to be able to see what you're typing into your password. You don't want anybody who's looking over your shoulder to be able to see your password. So the neat thing about input text fields is you can select them then look to the properties panel and scroll up. Look to type. Right now it's text, which means anything typed in here will appear as, as letters or numbers. But if you click on this, you can change it to password. And now when during simulation, when you type anything into this, into this field, it will appear obscured as, as little dots instead of, of text. Okay. Now we're going to add a login button here and give it a border and a background just so we'll be able to see it and change the text to login. Okay, and just for some consistency, let's go ahead and add that headphone icon again. All right, let's make it, how about 100 by 100? Let's also make it blue again. Okay, so now we're ready to add some interactions to this page. But the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do before that are add the other screens in the prototype. So to do that, look to the screens panel up here and click the plus and you'll see the option to add a new screen. So we're going to add a screen and we're gonna name it player. I'm gonna add another screen and name it rating. We're gonna add one last screen and name it share. So you can see that each of these are, are named, but screen one is not named, so we can go ahead and select it. Then select the base page in the outline panel. You can see that it's, it's called screen one right now and it's represented by this little iPhone logo. So select that, look to the properties panel scroll up and you can see that you can change the name from screen one and we'll call that login. Okay, so now we're ready to add some interactions to this page. So we're going to look to the outline panel again, click on dynamic panel one, expand that, and then go to panel one. So go here to the events panel and click add event. So this is the events editor. You'll see two things here, on tap and link to. The on tap represents the action that will start the event, while the link to represents the result of the action. We want the splash screen to splash the, the logo and the loading text for a second before we switch to the login panel. But we don't want them to have to tap on the screen to make that happen. So we can click on the on tap here and we'll see a bunch of options to choose from. 
Let's choose on page load. We're going to choose the resulting action. We're going to change it from link to to pause. And we're going to have this be 2000 milliseconds or just two seconds. Then click OK. Now you can see that an event has been added for this panel. We're also going to create an event to switch to the other panel, the login panel. So go back to panel one, click on this event that we've created, you'll see it highlighted in blue. Click on this gear, then add action after selected. On page load works perfectly here. We just want to change the link to, to set active panel. Then click on the outline here, and you'll see the options pop up. We'll choose panel two, which is the login panel. We can also choose a transition effect, Let's go ahead and choose fade. Okay. And there's one last event we're going to add to this screen. We're going to go to panel two. We're going to go to the login button. Go to add an event. And we're going to add an on tap link to event. So this, right, this default works perfectly. And we're going to have the target of the link be the player page. Let's go ahead and add the fade effect as well. Okay, so this, this screen is done. Now let's just go preview how it looks so far. So we can go here to simulate and it will load a browser of a simulated version of the prototype. Here's the loading. And here is the sign in page. And we can type in anything here and type in the password. You can see that it's obscured and then log in, and we have been linked to the player page, but there's nothing here right now. So let's keep going. All right, let's go to the, the player page here. Put that back in. Okay. So we don't wanna have to build our own music player designed from scratch. We would have to put an album, screen, play, pause buttons, that sounds like a lot of work. We've already got you covered there. You can scroll down to iPhone iOS again, to screen examples, and we're going to choose the player screen. Drag that onto the canvas. Looks pretty good so far. One change we're going to make is to change this text to be that blue. We can keep the color scheme here. Go ahead. There we go. And let's also delete these icons here at the bottom since we don't want it to look exactly like the stock player. Let's go ahead and select each one and delete it. All right. Now we're gonna scroll back up here, add a button to the bottom. And this is just going to say rate this track. And we'll give it a border and a background. All right, and just to be consistent, let's go ahead and add that headphone icon again at the bottom. And we'll make that a little bigger. Let's make it 50 by 50. And we will make it blue again. And instead of having to do that all over again, we can just select it and copy and paste it. So now we have two. Okay. All right, this page is almost done. We just need to add an interaction. So select the button and on tap link to also works perfectly here. We're gonna have it linked to the rating page. Let's have it do the fade effect again. All right, that page is done. Let's go ahead to the rating page. Okay. And again, we're going to go ahead and look to the iPhone screen examples. We're going to choose album screen and drag that onto the canvas. So you can see a bunch of different song options here. 
But we don't really want to have those. We just want to have the album up here as well as the back button. So we can go ahead and delete all of those. To do that, look to the outline panel, expand album screen, and expand cell center. You can see which item is represented by the text in the outline panel if it is outlined in blue. So we can go ahead and click on this, then shift click all the way down to playlist separator two, but not album header. And we can go ahead and just click delete and those are all gone. We're also going to delete the cell bottom since we're not gonna have all those options down there. We just select that and delete it. All right, and before we do anything else, let's match that color scheme. So go ahead and select these items and change them to be that blue. This icon as well. And this back button. So right now you'll see that there are a few events already created for this back button. These will basically just change the color of the of the button when you click on it, but we're not gonna wanna have those since we're changing the color of it. So we can just delete those events. To do that, look to the on tab here, to the gear, and then delete event. And that's all gone. All right, now we're just gonna change the color here. All right. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change the layout of this cell. So go ahead and click on Cell Center and scroll up to the Properties panel. Right now you'll see that the layout is vertical, which means that anything that you place into this cell will be placed one on top of the other, and that is the only way you can place it. We don't want that. We wanna be able to place anything in this cell wherever we would like. So we're gonna change it to a free layout. All right, now we're gonna go back up to basic widgets, drag text into here. Okay, and we're just gonna write the track name. So the track was Genesis. And we will make that text a little bigger here. Let's make it size 14. All right. So now we're gonna add the ability to rate the track. So we're gonna go down here to forms and inputs and drag a custom select list on to the canvas. You can see that there are a few different types of select lists. There's a list box, which just allows you to view a list of values. There's a select list, which is just a static appearance of a select list. You can't customize it. A custom select list allows you to change the appearance of it, and a multi-select list allows you to select multiple, multiple values. So we're just gonna use a custom select list. Make sure you have that selected, it will appear as category one. Look to the properties panel and scroll up, and go to edit values. Right now you can see that there are three values here, new value one, two, and three. We're going to want to delete those. There's also an empty space here. So select that, press the X until each of them are gone. Now we're gonna add our own values. So go up here to this bar. The first value we're gonna add is just a prompt. So how do you rate this track? Click the plus and it's been added. First one we're gonna add is one star, two stars, three stars, four stars, and five stars. Okay, click okay. Now you can see that that has been changed in here. But we don't just want a text rating, we wanna see something visual. So we're going to add stars to represent the rating. The first step for that is to add a dynamic panel Go to dynamic content and drag a dynamic panel onto the canvas here. We're going to add four more panels. 
So each of these panels will represent the possible star rating. So two, three, four. Now there are five panels. I'm gonna go back to panel one. Let's search for star up here in the widgets and you'll see a few different options. But before we drag a star in there, we're going to change the layout of this panel. We're going to change it to horizontal as well as the alignment to center and the spacing to middle. So now when we place anything into this panel, it will, all, it will automatically appear in the center of the panel because it can be a little hard to make sure everything's centered on your own. This will do that for you. All right. So we're going to drag one full star into it here. You'll see that it's in the center. And we're going to drag four empty stars behind it. All right, now we have a one star rating. And to simplify this process, we can just select them all here in the outline panel and copy them. But before we paste them into panel two, make sure to change the layout to horizontal as well and middle and centered. Then you can paste and we're going to delete that select the full star and drag it in right next to that. All right, now we're gonna to go to panel three, change the spacing to centered and middle, paste, and delete, and delete. Drag the full star in here. Now we have three full stars. All right, two left, panel four. Change the layout, centered and in the middle. Paste, delete, delete this star and delete that star. Drag the rest of them on here. Three and four stars. Oh, that's too many. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and copy these again, just so we don't have to add a lot more full stars the last time. All right, last panel. Change the layout to horizontal, centered, and in the middle. Paste. Delete this last star, and then add the last full star. All right. Now you can see by looking to each different panel that they have the correct number of stars. Looks pretty good. Now let's add the ability to select a value in the dropdown and have it be reflected by the number of stars shown. So to do this, make sure you've selected the dropdown. It will be shown as category one in the outline panel. Click add event. We're going to change it from on tap to on change. This will detect if there has been any change in the selection of the drop-down selection. All right. The resulting action is going to be set active panel. And we are going to choose panel one, the one star panel. So this will be our foreign to conditions here. So right after you create that event, you'll see here add condition. We're going to click on that. So this is the conditions expression builder. You can see a bunch of different options here to create some pretty complex conditions, but ours is going to be pretty simple. So to create our condition, we're going to expand album screen and cell center, and we're going to click category one and drag it up here. You'll know that category one has been dragged up if you see selected. So right now, without, anything, without doing anything else to this condition, the condition says when anything is selected in the dropdown, but we don't want that. We want it to be when one star is selected in the dropdown. So to do this, look to comparators and the equals. Drag that up here next to the other bubble, and you'll see that another bubble has been created. We'll double click on here and write one star. 
All right, so now the condition says when the item or the value selected in the dropdown equals one star. It's important that the text value here matches exactly what you've written in the dropdown. If you wrote one star with a number instead of the word, you just need to make sure that you change this to reflect that so the values are exactly the same. All right, that's the condition. So we just click OK. And you can see that it has been added here. Now look to else. We're going to add another action. So this will just be when that category, or rather that condition, is not fulfilled. This is what we'll do instead. So we're going to keep on change. We're going to change link to to set active panel. Expand the album screen and choose panel two this time, the two star panel. Click OK. Go to the else add condition. This will be the condition tied to that second event. And it's just going to be the same thing, but instead of equals one star, it's going to be equal two stars. All right. And we're just going to do this every time for each different panel. So this is the third star. Here we go, panel three. Add the condition. When the dropdown equals three stars. All right, two more left. Set active panel. The fourth star, add the condition. When the dropdown equals four stars. All right, one more left. Here we go. Fifth panel, add the condition. when the dropdown equals five stars. All right, that is the event. So this is a little complex. You can see that there's a lot of different values here. Let's go ahead and preview how this looks. So let's click simulate. All right, how do we rate this track? I really love this track. I'm gonna rate it five stars. Here we go, select the value. There we go. Three stars. Didn't like it so much. Let's do one star. No, I didn't like it. All right. Looks pretty good so far, guys. Let's keep going. We have one page left. But before we do that, we're going to add some a few little interactions here to the last page. So we're going to click this back button up here at the top. And we're going to add an event here. It will just be and on tap link to we'll have it link back to the player page. Okay. And we're going to add a button here at the bottom. And that will just be share. All right, we'll add a little background. Okay. On tap link two works perfectly. Add the fade effect. And here we go. All right, here to the share page. So the first thing we're gonna do on this last page is drag a dynamic panel onto the entire canvas. Here we go. All right, we're going to drag a rectangle onto the canvas as well into this panel. Here we go. Make sure it's even. Get rid of the outline. And we'll choose some text up here just to indicate that you're going to be sharing this with a friend. 
Let's make the text a little bigger. And we will add a line here just to separate this out. Okay. All right. Now we're going to add some contacts to choose from. So we'll choose or look to the search bar up here and search contact. And you'll see a few different options here already. We'll drag two of these onto the canvas. And we'll make them a little bigger. So select it, look to the properties panel. Let's change it to 50 by 50. All right, drag that out a little bit. We don't want to have to redo that, so we can click on here, shift click on the other contact, copy and paste, and now we have those other options all done. That a little bit. All right, now let's add some names. Go back to basic widgets. Drag text here, and we'll give them some names. How about good old J John Doe? All right, and Jane Doe. Uh, how about Robert Diaz? And how about Linda Diaz? We have two couples here. <laughs> All right, we don't want to have to change the properties of each of these to be a little bigger. So we can we can shift click on each of them on the canvas or in the drop down or rather the outline panel and you'll see each of them selected. Go to the properties panel and we'll change them to text size 12. All right. So, now we're going to add another panel to this Another blank canvas here. We're going to drag another rectangle into the canvas. All right, get rid of the background or the, the border. Write some text up here, just say, confirm your message. Make it size 14. All right, we're going to drag another little rectangle in here. This is just going to represent the message that we're sending. Okay, give it a little background. And the neat thing about rectangles is that you can type in them. So we can go ahead and type, hey, I just rated the track. Genesis by Apocalyptica. There we go. On Rate My Music. Check it out. So that looks a little... We need some more spacing here. So we can go ahead and just select the rectangle and look to line height and we'll change it to 30. All right, that looks a little more spaced out. We'll add a button down here to just uh, say share. Add a border, background. All right, and just because we can, let's add the headphone icon. One more time. Let's change it to 100 by 100. And make it blue again. All right, now we're at we're ready to add the last interactions of this prototype. Let's go back to panel one. So we don't want to have to create an event for both the contact icon and the, the name text. We don't want to have to create an on tap set active panel for each of them. So what we can do is go back to basic widgets again. Then go to navigation and drag a hotspot onto the canvas. 
So a hotspot allows you to apply an event to an area on the canvas that may not necessarily have any elements on it. This is kind of a perfect example as well, where you have many groups of elements together, but want to apply an event to each of them together. So we can just copy and paste one for each name. All right. Now we're going to add an event for each of these hotspots and on tap works perfectly. We're going to have it set active panel. And we're going to choose panel two, which is the message. All right. Panel two, two more. All right, last one. Okay, guys, that is our prototype. Let's see how it looks. All right, loading page. We'll sign in. Here we are at the player page. We're going to rate this track. We're going to rate it. Three stars. All right, I want to share this rating with a friend. Uh, let's share it with Robert. Okay, and here is our message to Robert. All right, guys, that is the prototype. But say you don't want to keep this prototype to yourself. Maybe you want to share it with your coworkers or other people. No problem. Go back to Just in Mind here. Go to share. Share. You'll see a few accounts to choose from. We're going to choose this account. I'm going to create a new project here. Rate my music new. All right. Now we can view it in our online account. Here we go. Here's the prototype that we just created. Now you'll see a few different options here. You can password protect your prototype, so only people with a password will be able to view this. You can set it to a public prototype, so anybody with the link can see it. Or you can invite reviewers to your prototype. So anybody you add here will receive an email with a token, and they will be able to view the simulated version of the prototype without needing to have the just-in-mind application themselves. Once they've gone ahead and done that, they can add comments to the prototype in your online account. Click on it here. Here's the prototype. Switch comments mode on. Then you can select any element on the screen and add a comment. That's right, looks great. Click add. And the owner will receive a notification that a comment has been added. You can also see that the comment has been added by this little circle here denoting it. And you can view or rather change or delete the comment. Okay. So, it can be a little hard to visualize your prototype on your computer. You might want to be able to see it on your own device to simulate how it will really look in your hand. You can do that. Make sure you've downloaded the Just in Mind View on Device mobile application and that you've shared your prototype to your online account. Once you've done that, you can go back to Just in Mind. Click on View on Device. And you'll select the account. It will publish it. And now you're ready to view it on your phone. Download the app here. So since I can't show you my phone today, I've gone ahead and taken a few screenshots of what it looks like on your phone ahead of time. Here we go. So first you'll see that the prototype is downloading. Then you'll see a few options, controls. And then there's the prototype. It looks exactly the same as it does 
in just in mind. Okay. All right, guys, so this is a pretty simple prototype we've created here today. There's no data, there's no variables. You can obviously expand on it as much as you would like. I have loaded up here a more complex example that is stored on justinmind.com. See here? All right, you can see that there are many different screens here available. And it's way more complex. It includes data masters and variables and lots of different stuff here. So these are all available on justinmind.com and you should definitely go and check out all those examples if you're looking for any inspiration. You can also go ahead to justinmind.com support and check out our wide range of tutorials or you can hit up our community forum and ask a more specific question there. We're happy to help with anything you need. Okay guys, that is our demo today. Do you have any questions for me? All right, here are some questions. Will this be accessible in later time? I could definitely go and upload this prototype and make it public if you would like to view it yourselves. All right, uh, what if I already have some mockups saved as images or in Photoshop? No problem, you can definitely use an image here, drag it onto the canvas and click here and you'll be able to select an image or a Photoshop file. Okay. Will this, here we go. How do you integrate this with Sketch? Okay, um, make sure you've downloaded the Just In Mind plugin for Sketch and you can go ahead and once you've done that, go to Plugins, Just In Mind, Export Artboard's Layers, and it will generate a VP file. And you can open that in Just In Mind. All right. How can I import my own data into this prototype? You can do this in several ways. One of the ways you're going to want to do that, let's add a new screen here. You'll want to create your own data master. And once you do that, you'll see an option here to select a CSV file. You can do that and it will import all of your data for you so you don't have to go ahead and import all of that manually. Okay. All right. Can multiple people work on a prototype at once? Absolutely, you can. You can do that using teamwork. Using teamwork, multiple people can work on that prototype at the same time, no need to download any other files from each other, uploading and downloading over and over again. If you use teamwork, you can make sure to Every element will be locked once you select it. So if I were using teamwork right now with someone else, if I selected this page, it would be locked. So no one else can make any edits to it while I'm using it. And once I'm done with it, I can, I can press unlock and it will be unlocked and I will be able to change. They, the other person will be able to change anything there. Okay. All right. Um, here's another question. Can I export my prototype to the App Store? Not exactly, but there are a few workarounds here. There is this 
online website called gonative.io and you can upload images or a website, I believe. You can upload a website or anything stored on a web link and it will convert that into a file that you could technically upload. Although it won't, tech, it won't be perfect, uh, we still do recommend going ahead and finding a developer so that you can find anything or specify everything exactly how you would like. All right, guys, we have one more question here. Can I work on this prototype on multiple computers and without using teamwork? Yes, you can. So there are a few ways that you can do that as well. Um, you shouldn't use teamwork if it's just going to be you. That can cause a little bit of, of trouble in the background. So the way to do that most efficiently is to share it to your online account. And then on your other computer, just go ahead and download that. You can download anything from your online account. Here, go back. You go to Actions. And you can download the VPT file as well as a few other options here. You can integrate it with usability texting tools, replace it with a new version, download the HTML, or just go ahead and delete it. And uh, guys, that is all the questions we have for today. Um, thank you very much for attending this session. I hope it helped your understanding of Just in Mind. We'll be holding other webinars in the future, ranging from a bunch of different topics. And I hope to see you at those webinars as well. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, feel free to go to our community forum or our customer support portal and ask us anything specific there. We're happy to help. All right, guys. Thanks for attending.